Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday, uh, Tuesday night, uh, August 17th edition of StudentLunchJustice.org. My name is Alan Collins. I am filling in for Ed tonight. And just so you know, I own more than just one blue shirt, so I just wanted to mix it up a little bit. Uh, but anyways, uh, welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to throw them out, and I will respond as quickly as I can. If I see them, uh, which is always kind of a given, I'm doing a live stream by cell phone, looking at the live stream by laptop, so it's kind of a hit or miss type of thing. So... Two things are going on right now, folks. Number one, we are fighting for the cancellation of all federal, uh, federally owned student loans. That has not changed. And we have been fighting for that since March 2020, so about 17 months now. So you know, we started the petition that ignited the national conversation about canceling student loans by executive order. So we're doing that. And that will not change because this is now a failed, catastrophically failed lending system. Uh, we also are fighting for the return of bankruptcy protections to all student loans. And we've been doing that since March 2005. So we've been doing that second thing for quite a while. And I'm very glad to tell you we have a good bill in Congress now at long last after many years in the Senate put out by the judiciary chairman, uh, Senator Dick Durbin from Illinois. Um, it's S-2598. This bill will return bankruptcy protections to all federal, federally guaranteed, federally owned loans, provided that the loans became payable uh, more than 10 years ago. So there's a waiting period. We're not thrilled about the waiting period. Kind of sucks. Um, still kind of an open question whether consolidation loans, other rejiggering of loans, rehabilitated loans, transfer of loans... Whether the clock resets for those or not, the 10-year clock, it, it should not. Um, the language as it stands right now is good, and what I said is what it is. So provided that the debt, not the loan, the debt uh, became payable more than 10 years ago. So we are thrilled with the language of this bill, folks. We've seen a whole bunch of nothing for 50, 16 stupid years on this. This is... A game changer and but we're not there yet a bill is just a bill um, and so you know I know nobody wants to fall for bankruptcy it's a terrible thing to have to do but we have learned over the years that the absence of bankruptcy lies at the core of this problem getting the threat of bankruptcy back is the one thing and maybe even the only thing that will light a fire under the lending people and compel them to cancel loans so I don't think we're going to get any kind of meaningful loan cancellation by executive order, certainly not by Congress. Don't even get me started there. But even by executive order, I don't think Biden's going to cancel a significant, if any, number of loans by executive order unless bankruptcy protections is returned. So we've been doing this for many years, guys. We've seen all the tricks and the traps, and we will not be fooled again. And we were fooled twice. Not fooled, but we were out-manipulated twice by people who wanted to uh, do some loan cancellation as a cheap, and I do mean cheap, uh, substitute for the return of bankruptcy protections. So we're not doing that. We got a great bill. We got to fight for it. S2598. A um, couple of announcements. I am thrilled uh, to mention that our own. Um, Well, Christian Wise, I'm just going to say his name. I don't think he's, uh, he went by David Wise in the article. But anyways, he was, uh, he was interviewed uh, for an article today at Business Insider, which noted that there's a ton of people that made voluntary payments during this pandemic repayment suspension. And even still, their balances, is, their balances increased. So I don't know if they were, I don't see how that could even be the case, but whatever. The servicers have all sorts of tricks and um, trade secrets and so forth that they like to use to jack loans up. So it actually doesn't surprise me that they found a way to increase the balances of people, even in the direct loan program, uh, despite there being an interest freeze. So anyways, thanks for stepping up, David. Um, Christian, uh, we appreciate you doing that. And to everybody out there, the media really should be our friend, folks. Um, we've been featured in the past on 60 Minutes, 
we've broken news in the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times. Well, no, yeah, actually, we have broken no, stories in the New York Times. Inside Higher Ed, Chronicle of Higher Education. Um, and pretty much every show you can think of, we've been on at one, one time or another. So the media should be our friend. Um, but that's not certainly not is not always true. There's a huge number of what I call swamp media out there. A ton of them write for Forbes magazine, by the way. But we see other contributing swamp creatures like Beth Akers and Jason Delisle and Dr. Dr. Richard Vetter and many other people. And they are nothing but shameful and shameless at the same time. I'm not sure how that's even possible. Cheerleaders for this lending program. And that was just the worst thing in the world. Guys, conservatives should be on our side. This bill that we're fighting for right now, it's um, co-sponsored. Uh, two sponsors, two prime sponsors. Dick Durbin in Illinois, who I said, but also John Cornyn, a, a Texas Republican. That is important because now we're a nonpartisan group. We kind of hate both parties at this point, honestly, after seeing them punt, 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 kick the can, kick the can. Uh, so we have no love for either party, but um, I have to say that historically speaking, the Republicans have been the the bad cop in this good cop, bad cop play that we find ourselves in. So to have a Republican sponsoring this bill that I just mentioned is very, very significant. Uh, and um, so, but you know, while John Cornyn is a Republican and he co-sponsored the bill, there's other people on that committee, for example, people like Ted Cruz, Lindsey Graham, who are I'm sorry, but they are just completely bought and paid for by the student loan industry. So they're going to try to do every trick they can do to change the current text of the bill, probably um, to t turn that 10 year waiting period into a 10 year repayment period. And oh, by the way, we don't have any record of your payment history for your loans, even though you're 60 years old and you've had them for 50 years. Yeah, we don't we don't have or 30 years, 40 years. Uh, we don't have your loan payment uh, history magically. It just disappeared. So now, yeah, you have to wait 10 years before you can file for bankruptcy. That is the sort of trick that we will absolutely see the industry play on us. You know, Sally May has been calling for the return of bankruptcy protections with a 7 to 10 year repayment period for over a decade now. This is a trick and we can't let that happen, guys. And it very well might. So we have to be on our guard. And... You can't sit back. You sitting there cannot sit back, although you're sitting there now. You can't do that if you want us to actually get student loan justice. Um, we've been doing this for 15, 16 years now. And the one thing that we've always been missing was more people like you getting off your ass. The fact that you're watching this live stream says a lot. Um, means you're probably already doing stuff. And to everybody out there doing the actions that we suggest every single day, I salute you. We are the pioneers. We are what made this happen. We are what made the conversation about canceling student loans by executive order happen. You know, it wasn't until we had a half a million signatures on our petition and we were getting interviewed, uh, we're getting interviewed by like Newsweek and Fox and a bunch of other uh, mainstream media. Only then did Elizabeth Warren and Chuck Schumer embrace the concept and we're glad they did. Don't get me wrong. But folks, up to $50,000 loan cancellation is nonsense. It's that's just it's fake. I'm sorry. Um, could mean anything, and it will mean nothing if the Department of Education has anything to say about it. And from the looks of it, they will or would. There would be means testing. They would find a way to bureaucratize to death whatever loan cancellation program um, might be put upon them. The one thing they cannot do anything about, they cannot bureaucratize, is the president saying simply, cancel the loans. There's no, no wiggle room there. There's no weasel words. So we got a lot of fighting to do, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the good news is um, this lending system has failed like no other lending system in the history of the United States has ever failed way worse than the subprime home mortgage thing. You know, the default rate for those were, was only 20%. The default rate for everybody walking around right now today with student loans, federal student loans certainly, is going to be 65, 75, 80%. We know 80% of all the federal borrowers were underwater even before the pandemic, meaning 
They were either not paying at all, and that's like 50%, believe it or not, before the pandemic, or they were paying and paying and paying, but their balance was going up, like the article that we see today. And those people's balance was going up despite there being a, an interest freeze. So... Um, so we got that going for us, folks. The lending system is, it's essentially a dead man walking. It's a zombie thing. Um, there is no saving it. And if you haven't noticed, uh, they keep postponing, uh, ending the repayment suspension. They keep trying to put off making people pay again. And that's not because they're nice people. <laughs> it's because they're scared to death. They, they are afraid to try and turn the lending system back on because they know what will happen when they do. And what will happen is nobody will resume pain. <laughs> and, you know, the art of doing nothing and having the benefits accrue to you, that art belonged to the Department of Education for years and decades. The less they did, and even the worse they did, like the worse information they provided, the more money they would make in the long run, you know, uh, people can default and try and run away and they just have to sit there and do nothing. And more often than not, those people wind up inheriting a ton of money and giving it all to the Department of Education, etc., etc. So the whole thing about doing nothing and having it, the benefits of that accrue to you, that's something the Department of Education and its crony contractors really like. They're really used to it. So they're really used to doing nothing. But now here, because of this pandemic, quite frankly, um, doing nothing only further cements the death of this lending system. So the fact that they um, continued it until uh, January 31st of next year, that just makes me all the more certain that this lending system is, it's in its death spiral. It just is. Um, and again, if I can see your comments, guys, I will gladly respond to them, but I'm not so sure that I can even see them here. Um, alas, I cannot. But that's okay. Um, I think I said everything I really wanted to say tonight, guys. Um, we are kicking ass, as I said. We've got the best legislation we've ever had. Um, it will at long last return the constitutionally enshrined right of bankruptcy to most federal student loan borrowers, assuming you've been out of school for 10 years or more. Um, we have something to strongly fight for, folks. And um, I will just say, I've been, I've been talking to congressional staff uh, since the bill was, well, since well before the bill was written. But um, we've got our ears to many different walls, I guess you could say. And everything bodes pretty well right now. But guys, I can tell you that without us, the public, getting loud, we're in big, we're still in big, big danger, guys. Big danger. Now, I don't want to be here a year from now saying, well, we had a shot and then fuck our people just got so lazy. They didn't do anything. They waited, they watched, they worried. And then they got out, they got swindled by the swindlers. And there's a lot of swindlers in Washington, DC. I don't want to be that. And you don't want to be the guy sitting there going, wow, I should have really gotten off of my ass for two fucking minutes last year when we had the chance to get these loans finally under control. Pardon my French. Uh, but <sighs> apathy is not going to get it done for us, folks. These are your loans. This is your problem. And I can guarantee you, we will not succeed uh, unless a significant percentage of the people on this group, of the million people on our petition, get off their asses. Pardon the French. PDF. PTF. So, um, not to be the heavy here, guys, but and but remember this also. If we can get even one Republican senator or uh, maybe even better Republican governor to stand up and say, Mr. President, cancel these loans. I will not have my great state of Georgia or Texas or Alabama or Tennessee or North Carolina, South Carolina or Indiana or uh, um, Nevada or um, did I say Alabama? Yeah, I'm not South Dakota. Uh, I said Tennessee, Ohio, Florida, I think I said. Um, I will not have my state conquered and enslaved by this federal debt where my people owe more than our entire state's total annual budget in student loan debt. 
I'm the governor of the state, and it's my job to protect my state, and we will not have the federal government uh, lording over our citizens' purse strings. That's just not going to happen on my watch. Mr. President, cancel the loans. If we can get even one Republican governor, I'm thinking of people like Ron DeSantis or uh, um, Brian Kemp or um, Greg Abbott in Texas would be a great one. Um, there's a bunch of different guys who it could be. If even one were to do that, I think it would cause a groundswell across the country where Republicans would finally take another look at this big government lending scam and say, oh, shit, wow. We're, at, we're Republicans, right? So yeah, we're not supposed to like this big government lending catastrophe that the founding fathers were very worried about when they called for uniform bankruptcy laws. Yeah, it will. I think it, a lot of people will wake up. But what's going to wake all those people up is us. Unless the governor feels some fire underneath his ass, pardon my French for the fourth time tonight, um, he's not going to fight for us, he or she. There's also Kay Ivey in uh, Alabama, I believe, if I'm getting the name right. Um so one person could be me, probably won't be because it seems like nobody listens to me anymore. And <laughs> But for where you live, like governors listen to their constituents. They don't listen to people with DC phone numbers so much. Um, but one person might be me, I don't know, might be you. It could be you, you sitting there. You could be the person who gets into a conversation with your Republican governor and say, Mr. Governor, why is our state owing more in student loan debt than, their, than our entire state budget, Governor? How could you let this happen to our fine state on your watch? Mr. Governor, I'm asking you right now, and have the media around too, tell the media, because almost nobody knows what I just said. Um, it's been nationally reported, yeah, 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 but eh, people just don't read stuff. And they won't know unless you tell them. So you're kind of the pioneer. You're kind of the ambassador. And a $1.8 trillion lending cancer, um, the weight of that is, whether you realize it or not, on your shoulders. Um, but I meant to say that in a really positive way, actually. I tried to make that like a very hopeful thing. And it is, because the, the point is, you, you could be the one person that gets that entire weight lifted off of this country, off of this economy, off of 45 million decent people who committed no crime, but for going to college, uh, 38 million of whom were never going to be able to repay their student loans even before the pandemic. So you could be a national hero. And believe me, I will recognize you as such loudly and proudly. You know, anybody who can get their governor to give a darn, no French there, um, step up and be the person that makes that smart phone call, has that good conversation, gets the right reporter, gets the right newspaper, or radio station, or news organization reporting on the fact that your state owes more in student loan debt than your entire federal, uh, entire state budget. Um, that is, that, that is hero status. You know, we, we see the term hero being thrown around probably pretty cheaply these days. But I would actually give that sort of hero status. There is, there, you know, there's a little bit of risk, I guess. So maybe you have to take a little more risk to be a hero. But all I'm saying is you could save the entire country. You, sitting there, if you were the person that got your Republican governor to stand up and say, Mr. President, enough. So make that happen. I'll buy you a free, t I'll, I will take this shirt off my back and give it to you. Like, that's a huge thing. Right. OK, maybe not. But um, it is a huge thing that you could accomplish. You all by yourself. But, you know, I can't put that passion in you. You got to have that fight in you already. You got to be pissed and you got to put your back into it. None of these throwaway phone calls. Hey, uh, hi. Could you ask the governor to tell the president to cancel student loan debt? OK, thanks. Bye. No, that's not that's not going to work. This one does that ever works. It never works. You gotta be strong. You gotta be smart. You gotta be persistent. You gotta be bold. You gotta be courageous. You got to make the argument. Now we've got very smart, smart people on this group. I happen to know. Uh, so um, impress us.
And I'm going to leave it there at that tonight. I've said just about enough tonight. Um, so hang in there, guys, and fight. This is where the fight begins. The fight doesn't end here. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel, but this is the this is the this is this is this is the tough stuff. This is getting over the hill. This is getting over the hump. So don't let yourself down. Don't let us down. And as corny as it may seem, sound. Don't let your country down. The nation actually kind of needs you on this, like big time. Um, so, anyways, guys, um, maybe the la very last thing I'll say of the night is if you can donate, please do it. Uh, we have a challenge out, actually. We can survive and fight and win this battle on very little money, like very little. We cannot do it on nothing. We did it on nothing for the first six years of our existence and... Uh, that's not doable anymore. Just can't do it. Now, having said that, we don't need much. We have a challenge out from Jason in Indiana. Um, he already donated a hundred bucks. Thank you, Jason. Um, but Jason went further and said, if we can get 50 people, five zero people to donate 20 bucks, which is a thousand dollars in total or any combination of that, like if, if, if 20 people donated 50 bucks, that would do it too. But if we can raise a thousand bucks by the end of the month, which incidentally is um, what we need to pay our monthly expenses, uh, at least our upcoming monthly expenses, get us through the end of the month, um, he will kick in an additional 50 bucks. Now, Jason is not a rich person. In mm -hmm. fact, I happen to know he's a very hardworking yet a, a, a guy of modest means. And if Jason can put up that kind of a challenge, I would hope, think, and um, pray or whatever that you would um, that you would step up because we are doing a lot of work on this end, folks, and we can't do it on nothing. We just cannot. We've gotten a ton done in the media, in Congress. Um, we now stand poised to finally crack this safe or whatever whatever analogy you want to use. Um, so please make a donation. Step up. Don't mm -hmm. make us hang. Mm -hmm. You know, um, doing the fundraising just to survive and thrive for the nickels and dimes that we need to literally keep our lights on, it takes a lot of energy, and it's a real pain in the ass. I don't know why, but it just is. So you can make all that stuff a lot easier on us by simply donating something. Um, you know, I put this call out today and yesterday, and we've got like zero in, which concerns me. Um, especially, you know, anybody who's been on this group for more than a year or two, you understand the importance of this group right here. We are the pioneers on this. Um, so please help with that. If you would, please, I appreciate it very much. Um, you can go to the website, studentloanjustice.org, click on the donate link. So, um, with that, I will wish you all a good night, a good luck, a Godspeed, God bless everybody. And don't forget, S2598.